Hey, we're at Nightbird Studios at the Sunset Marquee. I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm here with Tim Montana. I discovered you with Devil You Know. So Michael Wilshire uh, produced the album, and then we started writing together, and we, he just became like my right-hand guy. And so we just got in and started writing, recording, and I was like, hey, should we hire some outside session players? And he's like, no, dude, you're gonna play guitar. He's like, no, you have a sound, we gotta go with that. So him and I did all the guitars on it, uh, literally in a tough shed. That's like a tool shed that he put a Pro Tools rig in. So everyone's like, did you get a giant producer? Did you work in a giant studio? And I love working with underdogs. I'm an underdog. I yeah. don't want the namesake of somebody. I would rather have just like creative, you know, buddies in the room making something awesome. There's no fire, but I smell smoke. Not a lot of heart. Savage the title track. Can you yeah. talk to me about this song? Yeah, so there's a lot of themes of apocalypse stuff on this record. And I, that's what I love about rock and rolls. There's no, you know, there's there's no rules to what you write about. Looking at the world, I mean, look around, it's a strange time to be alive, right? There's a lot of weird shit. It really on. is, yeah, The world is fucking savage. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then me moving back to Montana, I'm like, yeah, 30 below zero is fucking savage as well. <laughs> so yeah. it's like that theme um, came about and we just wrote about it in the song. And uh, and it's funny, because I'm, I'm not drinking now, but I was drinking then, and I had drank like 12 chiladas that day yeah. we wrote the song. And I went back and tried to re-sing the vocal. Apparently I sang it better drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that vocal on that track is a Timmy 12 deep on those tall boy chilates. Yeah, so. and, you know, sometimes it works in a big way. Then know? the end of the record, I'm singing about sobriety. It was really a journey. <laughs> it's a journey throughout the record, <laughs> right. which is... Let's go in and talk about the next track now which is Ashes. Yeah. So it's also, this song lyrically also has references to Armageddon. And yeah. And things are right now. Except tell me about that. We brought a hot chick into the apocalypse because you don't want the world to end with, you know, yeah. you, know you, don't want, you want a hot chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want, you, want a, you want some good company when, you're, right, when the world right. is ending. You want to, you know, so tell Right. Me. So we just compared like this relationship, this, we wanted it to be sexy. And I was like, what are they going to dance to at strip clubs? Right. And I was like, I think this love like a loaded weapon. You trigger my obsession, you know? Yeah. And Armageddon rhymes with obsession. And, uh, and so we just tied all these lyrics into like a hot chick, the apocalypse. Like if the sky falls, like it's cool. I'm wrapped up inside you. Oh, <laughs> which I love. By the way, it's great. Yeah, there's no stuff. strippers dancing to that song. I'd be very disappointed. Yeah, so. I think you've got a good chance of that happening. Yeah, it's definitely because you were thinking of that's the mark for me. Strip clubs. Yeah. <laughs> so Tim, one of the songs I gravitated to right uh, the first time I heard the album was Die Today. Let's yeah. talk about this song. And where did the idea come from? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Die Today is about someone that puts their life on the side to go save other people's lives. I forgot to die today because I'm just a crazy motherfucker that runs into danger to save other people's lives. Just another grain of sand in the kingdom of the damned, you know, pulling lions off of lambs. And I, I forgot to die today. So that's been going over live tremendously. And I, I just give a shout out to all the veterans in the active duty. This song goes to anyone that runs into danger to save people's lives. Um, I do hope someday when I die that the song's big enough that someone makes a meme and goes, you know what he remembered to do today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Shut Me Out. Let's talk about that track. Yeah, that one was wild because the lyrics fell out quick. Micah sent me that track. And it reminded me of the angst and pain I had as a kid. And so it sounds like it's about a relationship, but I'm pretty open about the shit. It's it's about, I had a step person in my life who was horrible to me and my mom. And that love me, hate me, break me, shut me out, push me away, like, it's a little bit complicated. I'm out here sedated. For me, that was my childhood. It was a fucked up childhood, but that's, the feelings of an unwanted kid right there. So that was therapeutic for me to say the things that I've wanted to say my whole life in a song. Right Again's a really great song too on this record. Yeah, the lyrics are really interesting. You know, I mean, everyone's been in a relationship where someone's always right, right? I don't yeah. say you're right again, but clearly these two people get along one place and that's in the sack. I barely want the best to you, so cut me like a knife and say you're right again. Lyrically, that's a really interesting song and I was really proud of how we wrote that because it takes some really interesting curves and, yeah. and it's just like that idea. Let's talk about Get You Some. Now this song is a 
heavy. Yeah. 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 yeah, this one was really fun, and it's our set opener, so we'd come out swinging for the fences, loaded for bear. I almost freaking faint by the time the set, by the time that song's <laughs> over, because I try to run and then scream, and uh, so it hits heavy, but it's that's kind of a, all, all these things, uh, these lyrics kind of point back to childhood. I opened this all poor white trash from a single wise survivor of the thought of suicide. Light in the dark, voice in the crowd, starts out as a spark, now I'm a mushroom cloud. But it kind of has a little arrogance in there, you know, the whole mushroom cloud thing. Um, and then my wife laughed because I said, now I'm four kids deep buying five-star dinners. She's like, yeah. motherfucker, you've never bought me a five-star dinner. <laughs> So Death Row is the next song on the record. Yeah. I love that you talked about it. Another fucked up relationship song. Uh, my favorite line on that is uh, lethal affection instead of injection. You see yes. what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> so we, <laughs> my wife's like, well, who is this woman you're talking about so negatively in all these songs? I'm like, it's you. <laughs> 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 I mean, we all had those relationships. Right, you know, right, but it's it's different. comparing a relationship to being on death row, um, and I think the lyrics are really clever, the hooks uh, really good. Um, enjoyed that, and we shot the music video. This is a really funny, fucked up story. We shot it in Montana State Penitentiary in Deer Lodge, Montana, which is very haunted. It's, I mean, they hit a button or pull a lever, and all the cells shut at once, and it is spooky. And we're like, we need a, a hot chick that will do something wild. So we called the strip club. So, yeah, somebody popped the chub on the video. And uh, Love and News, like, I'm on death row. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Ain't Coming Down is the next one. Can we talk about this track now? Yeah, yeah. So Ain't Coming Down is the first month I lived in Wise River, Montana. And uh, took over this bar. I've never owned a bar. I've played bars for most of my life, so I'm like, oh, I've played a bar, I can own a bar. Yeah. And uh, so I hired my old guitar player, Kyle Reif, who's fantastic, but he's a funny son of a bitch, and like, week two, he decides to eat a weed gummy and then call the cops, because he thought he was having a heart attack. And I had, he's he's my age, but I have to have father-son conversations with him. Yeah. And he said, the good news is, the ambulance took over an hour to get here, and by the time they showed up, he wasn't high anymore. He just yelled off the balcony, Sorry, false alarm, I'm not high anymore. <laughs> so, I'm high and I ain't coming down is in reference to that. That he wasn't coming downstairs. From yes, the top yeah, the so that's where the hook came from. I'm yeah. high and I ain't coming down and I hear words getting round is because the fucker calls an ambulance because he got high. Lovely is the yeah. next track on the record. Let's talk about that. Song. Yeah, that's got some grunge vibes. And again, kind of talking about the relationship thing. Just the phrase, oh, isn't this lovely? You know, it's kind yeah. of a negative term. You hear, oh, lovely, right? When yeah. something shit goes south. And I'm like, I don't think I've heard that in a song of like shit going bad and lovely. It's kind of a, you know, yeah. a juxtaposition, if you will. Fight the demons, face the past. The final track on the record is called Day by Day. And I, when I first heard this song, I, it, it was, I, it was, I just love this track. Talk to me about ending the album with this song. Yeah, it's a, it's a very vulnerable song. When I started yeah. spitting out the lyrics, uh, the guys in the room were like, you sure you want to say that shit? And I was like, yeah, I think I do. My dad drank himself to death. My grandfather choked to death on his own vomit a month after I was born. This shit has plagued my family and taken out all of these men and made them do horrible things. And I was like, do I want to fucking be that? Do I want to do that? It's it's hard to stay sober and I want to live before it's over. And I'm going to say it publicly in this song that you know it's been something I've struggled with. And yeah. I'm willing, again, willing to accept that. Maybe I should talk to a therapist, but I don't like fucking therapists. I want to talk to a guitar about it. Yeah. If alcohol works for you, it works for you. But I was getting to that point where it doesn't fucking work for me anymore. Yeah. And uh, boy, I've committed many a felony. You know? Yeah. Did I just say that on camera? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs>